Good day. We are coming on the air with significant breaking news and a critical moment in the presidential race. NBC News has learned President Biden will step aside as the presumptive Democratic nominee. He will suspend his bid for a second term, and instead he will pave the way for a different Democratic candidate to face former President Trump this November. I want to show you the letter that we are just getting seconds ago from the president from his office, in which he says that it has been the greatest honor of his life to serve as his president. He goes on to say, while it has been my intention to seek reelection, he says, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. The news comes after Wednesday's announcement by the White House that President Biden has COVID and with growing calls by Democrats now, dozens of them publicly, who have suggested that President Biden should, in fact, withdraw from the race. So this is the news that we have here on a Sunday afternoon. It is a stunning and historic development, but it is not altogether unexpected based on the reporting from NBC News. Remember that President Biden has struck a defiant tone ever since those calls began after his debate performance several weeks ago widely panned as disastrous. You now have a number of House Democrats, and as of today, three senators who are suggesting that President Biden should, in fact, step off the ticket. And it appears as though he has, in fact, made that decision to do so. He says that he will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about his decision. He goes on to say that he expresses his deepest gratitude to all of those who have worked so hard to see him reelected. And importantly, he goes on to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work, again, thanking the American people for the faith and trust that they have placed in him. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. We've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation, in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances. Passed the first gun safety law in 30 years. Appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court. And passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once-in-a-century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president. And while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me re-elected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember, we are the United States of America. So a couple of questions answered here and a couple of questions still ahead. First of all, there was a question that if President Biden stepped off the ticket, would he also, in fact, resign from the presidency? He is making clear in this letter that he will not do that. But there's a big question remaining, which is, what happens next? What happens next now to the Democratic ticket? There had been some calls, some questions for, for example, an open mini primary, perhaps, before the convention that is set to happen next month in Chicago. There had also been a question of whether Kamala Harris should now take the top of the ticket. She is the one who would inherit, essentially, the infrastructure, the campaign money, the campaign cash, the war chest that the Biden-Harris ticket has accumulated. That's right, Hallie. And this was no doubt the most difficult decision of the president's five-decade-long political career. And he 
he no doubt had a plenty of time to think about it over the past few days as he continued I have no recovering I have no from that COVID-19 diagnosis since Wednesday here at his Rehoboth Beach, Delaware uh, home. And remember, this isn't coming as too much of a shock considering what we knew to be happening privately within Biden's inner circle. We knew that there were more reality-based conversations that the president was having with those closest to him, even with his own family members, according to sources familiar with the Biden family's conversations. They were uh, considering factors like how, if, if he were to step down, what that replacement would look like, what that process would look like, how he would leave the party and the country in the most stable position as possible, specifically in the party's case, in as best a position as possible to defeat former President Trump in November. And of course, the president has said that the only things that would uh, make him reconsider staying in this race would be the Lord Almighty or a medical condition.